Okay, let's go into a different farm and take a look at the overclocking profiles. The default config is, of course, whatever your rigs are configured to do when nothing else is specified. There's a toggle here that allows you to create changes for both NVIDIA and for AMD. Now on NVIDIA here, we've got a core overclock of 40 megahertz, no overclock on the memory. And then fan is set to 100% to ensure that it's always cool. And then a power limit of 150, do your own research for your own overclocks, but these are the default values for this mine. Now by default, the enlargement pill is not turned on for this mine. You might decide that you have enough gddr 5 x cards that that makes sense for you. I'm going to go to my overclocking settings over here, and you can see I've got a couple of things. First off, I do not have a default overclocking profile for Prog Pow as an algorithm, but I could have one if I wanted to. I've got a configure new algo button right here, and all I need to do is select the algorithm. So ethash, kryptonite, Prog Pow, there it is. And of course, HiveOS is the first mining operating system to offer this. So I can say that I want a specific clock speed for this algorithm. I can say that I want a specific core index maybe, or I can say that I want a specific core voltage, memory clock, or mem state, and then fan. Let's talk a little bit about what all this means, and I'm going to start with core state. This is a graphic directly from AMD about overclocking Polaris cards in their tool, Wattman. Seven different core states you can select, and they sort of have this different frequency curve. On that top row, there's a frequency that's assigned to each state. This can be adjusted from within Polaris BIOS editor and then baked into a modded BIOS ROM. And then the voltage control is something you would control manually as well. So you'll notice here it's automatic, set to automatic. But frequency at each core state can be adjusted manually from within Polaris BIOS editor. So definitely pay attention to what you're doing when you're doing your BIOS tuning and BIOS editing. But of course, it can be adjusted here in HiveOS as well. If you know you've got a core state that already has a specific, a specific frequency for the core frequency, then you might want to start there when creating your new overclock settings. So on this card, I feel very comfortable with core state 5, and I don't really need to adjust the core clock or the memory clock because I already know what happens when I do that for this card. I'm going to bring the core voltage down to 850 millivolts and then I'm going to leave the fan, I'm going to drop it down to 65% and then I'll save that. That will now be my preset for Prog Pow. Anytime I'm mining a coin that uses Prog Pow, these cards will automatically flip into this overclock for me on AMD. But then there are several other overclocking profiles, 1060 for EVGA. 1060 for Zotac 6 gig, and then several tests for Polaris cards. Let's take a look at this one. Now clearly there's not going to be anything changed in the NVIDIA side because these are AMD cards. So we have to flip the switch to see the AMD overclock settings. The core clock is set at 1167. The core state is set at three. Core voltage is at 900 millivolts. And then the memory clock is set at 1950. Mem state index, if you're not familiar with which one you need, it may cause problems. And then the fan percentage clearly on these cards is not turned up because these are mining edition cards with no fans. Why don't I go through the full process of downloading vBIOS and then uploading that vBIOS back to a card. Downloading a vBIOS, I'm just going to select the card that I want to download. I'll throw that command over to the rig. Right here, I need to go one step further and click on this right here. What that's going to do is that's essentially a link to the ROM. You'll notice it's now downloaded and now I can open up Polaris BIOS editor. It knows that it's a BIOS or a ROM file. There we go. So now it's figured out exactly what to do. I'm actually very happy with exactly the way this is right now. And I could do some other changes, but you'll notice right here, these are those, those are those core states that we were talking about before. Core states are largely unchanged. These are the stock core states for this device. To get a good overclock from your AMD cards, all you really need to change are the memory straps. You can flash those back to your AMD cards and then all of the rest of the overclocking and undervolting can be done from within HiveOS. That's Polaris BIOS editing in a nutshell. If you've got specific types of memory, it's possible that Polaris BIOS editor will allow you to do a one-click timing patch and that might work fine for you. Uh, but I definitely recommend doing your homework and getting a little extra performance because you can with HiveOS and then you can quickly flash all of the cards in your rig or all the cards in your farm by going rig per rig and doing this kind of application. I can click on flash vBIOS 
And if I've got mixed cards, like maybe I've got RX 560s and RX 570s and RX 580s, I might want to go through one at a time and flash their individual BIOS. It'll cause problems if I try to flash a BIOS from a 550 over to a 580 and vice versa. They're not similar enough for me to do that. But if they're all the same card, then I can simply select all. And if I know that it's a BIOS that's confirmed to work, and I don't want to have any kind of hangups during the process, I might also want to force the flashing regardless of whatever security check might pop up and might get in the way. All right, guys, that is overclocking and flashing vBIOS for AMD cards in a nutshell. With regards to the enlargement pill, when you're working with devices that do not have GDDR5X memory, there's really no point. Now let's take a look at another mine that does have cards with GDDR5X memory. Here we've got multiple rigs that have multiple GPUs in them. Going to the overclocking profiles, there's pretty much just this one. And here we see that there are unique memory clocks per card, and then a core clock that goes across all of them, and then the enlargement pill with a power limit that's different for each. Now remember that the enlargement pill may or may not be helpful with X16R or with other algorithms like variants of Kryptonite. So having ETH enlargement turned on if you're mining Monero might not be any benefit at all. Let's create a variant of this overclocking profile that's for Monero. Here's Kryptonite. We'll leave the core clock high, but we'll turn ETH enlargement off and then we'll leave it just at that. That one change will keep the overclocking profile from having to pass one more argument to the miner and there'll be one fewer thing for the miner to worry about when spinning up any Kryptonite coins. 